free speech is open to debate, which is where the Ricky Gervais thing comes in. Yeah, well, look, he's a he's known about this issue a long time. I can absolutely, can't tell you why, I can absolutely assure you that man is not uh, uneducated. Uh, and I don't think it's just a free speech issue. I think the reason he's talking about it is because it's absolutely ludicrous. It was gasping for comedy. I mean, what could be more funny than a mm. six foot four man Mm. racing against women and everyone mm. pretending in that room that he actually was female and he's in that changing room with those girls you know mm. and when they when they object and say they feel uncomfortable because he's a heterosexual male um they're told they have to be quiet their parents were told if they make a fuss or talk to the press those girls will be out so it was absolutely gasping i'm i'm more concerned that people like jimmy carr uh, Frankie Boyle is well on the trans train, yeah. uh, but some of these other so-called free speech will say anything comedians are absolutely not touching this with a barge pole. So now we're going to ramp up the conversation here because in the United States, and we all know what the old maxim is, or, you know, if it happens in America, it's going to happen here in 15 years' time or so, mutilating children. Mm, yes. Is that dramatic, an overdramatic way of putting it, or is that the real description of what's going on? It almost underplays what's going really? on. Yeah, it's so barbaric. So in some states in America, age 13, if you're a girl who thinks she's a boy, you can have your breast surgically removed. Mm. Uh, puberty blockers might start at the age of sort of 10. Um, there's a... Uh, uh, I can't remember what, an endocrinologist, and she will give testosterone f to little girls at the age of eight. Mm. So, With the consent of the child who is not old enough to make those decisions, or the parents, who who's driving this? Well, there's a lot of collusion. So there's doctors, they make quite a bit of money. There's mm. a pharmaceutical industry, they make a huge amount of money. They get medical patients for life. Once you can pull a child in at the age of eight, uh, you've got a you know, you've got a, a nice big income from that person. Um, teachers, counsellors, anybody you would want to go if you had trouble with your child, um, that's what you can, that's who you can access, that who is fully, fully paid up uh, as part of this uh, juggernaut, um, okay. bringing kids in. Right, we're going to go to the phones, 03444991000, and Khalid's in Leicester. Khalid, you are on Talk TV. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, Khalid. Welcome. I think, you know, we're, we're entering very dangerous territory now, I mean, in the sense that we're trying to make everything acceptable. If, if for example, when we were at school many years back, uh, long, many moons ago, you can say, um, I remember somebody wanted to marry a sheep in America. That, 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 that wedding took place. It did happen, think, that did happen, yeah. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that well, how far are we going to, you know, go beyond nature? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're, going, we're going to take dangerous, mad territory whereby our future generation's sanity is at stake here. Yeah. You know, honestly, we it's are, already we gone, are, hasn't it? In some cases, it, it has gone. It's, yeah. it's ridiculous. We, we, you know, it is going to such an extent whereby, you know, in in the future, you're going to have somebody saying, you know what, I love this house. I'm going to marry this house. Yeah, you know, it's going to it's going it's going to get that sort of stage. You know, can, we, can we it, how do we combat it, in your opinion? What do we do to stop this? You see, you've got to go back to basics. You know, whenever we go back to basics, you know, look, a man is a man and a woman is a woman. Mm -hmm. If somebody wants to individually, I mean, personally change whatever they want to do, that's individual. But we don't, we don't in society make it such that we, we, we become, how can I put it, um, pushed into a direction yeah. whereby we, you know, we're told to accept that that is right. No, it is not right. You know, if somebody, if somebody decides they want to, you know, um, grow different, legs you know along on their body or do all sorts of crazy things you know whatever they want to have 20 eyes for example stuck on their stuck on their on, on their on their stomach you can identify as an octopus then, I suppose. Right, so if somebody wants to do it individually personally that's up to them but yeah. we cannot make that a norm in society no. because our and not for children never anything. for children no, what I'm saying about our future generations we, what, what, what the heck are we teaching them if we look 20 yeah. years down the road if the, if we don't stop these things now, twenty years down the road, our ch our children say, "What the heck did you do to?" Well, wasn't there a class that know? where one girl decided what she wanted to be a boy, and sort of the other girls in the class were sort of copy? Go, oh, I also can identify. Yeah. And it was sort of, you know, it's a bit of peer pressure, and there was that sort of yeah. thing happening. It's a there? social contagion. So yeah, yeah. once somebody gets, and you get so much attention, you become yeah. the sort of king or queen of your class. Yeah, yeah. Your yes. teachers have to call you by a different name and a different pronoun. And uh, there was the a girl that changed events. her mind, didn't it? She she transitioned to a man, and she goes, "I regret it now." 
I was in the uh, Court of Appeal for that oh. case. It was frightening how learned people were talking about 10-year-olds consenting. Mm. Kelly, 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 you and whose army, it's not just you, is it? There, there's a group of you who are fighting this because yes. I would imagine your inbox is overwhelmed. A hundred percent. It Look, from all over the world. So I sell these T-shirts as part of uh, raising funds to continue my campaign. I've sent T-shirts to a quarter of the countries in the world. Like, it is touching everywhere. It's textbook. Uh, there are many different threads of different uh, approaches in the UK of how we're fighting this. I would say Standing for Women probably does it the best. Um, but there are many different ways to approach this. Uh, straight talking, uh, no compelled language. Uh, those are the first sort of fundamental okay. uh, ways of doing it. Khalid in Leicester, thank you very much. Let's go to Anne-Marie in Hertfordshire. Anne-Marie, welcome. Hi, uh, hello, everyone. Hi, Anne-Marie. Um, Kelly, I just want to say thank you ever so much for speaking up for women in the way that you do. I really appreciate it. Um, myself, in this whole conversation, I feel very confused as to... Um, as a woman, who am I and what am I supposed to do? If I stand up for women's rights, I'm suddenly a turf, which is an expression I've never heard of before. Um, you know, if I support, you know, trans rights, I'm suddenly against women. I'm very confused as to, as a woman, exactly where I'm supposed to be, if that makes sense. It does. My advice would be... What do you want for the most... So think of the most vulnerable woman in your life or the most vulnerable girl in your life, and then what do you want for her? Do you want her to be able to go in a, to a hospital ward that is single sex and not share it with men? Do you want that person to be able to... That girl to be able to go in a public toilet um, and not have to share it with a man? So I think we have to forget what people are going to call you. You have to stand by what you fundamentally believe to be right. Well, no, it's not about what people call me. It's, not, it's, it's about, you know, you don't know where in society because you've got some people saying, oh, we don't even know what a woman is. Hmm. So am I allowed to be proud to be a yeah, woman? What are, the law, what are the laws as well on it? Are you allowed to say certain things? Are you stopped from saying certain things now? Well, we're almost in a position in the UK now where if I'm in a woman's changing room and a man comes in yeah. and derobes yeah. and he's clearly male yeah. and I say something, get out, maybe use a profanity, mm. I could do that, um, I could be criminalised and he won't be done for indecent exposure. A hate, a hate crime sort of thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, so How can that be allowed? How can that be allowed? Because if I was with you for some reason in, in that toilet, which I wouldn't be, or if I was outside, I was aware of it, yes. I would 100% be on your side, and surely the vast majority of decent people would. Why can't we just stand up against this? Well, this is a really tiny, noisy minority. It is, but they're powerful, and they've... they've basically they're only everything. powerful because we're not standing up to them as a sort of general public. Well... That is that is true, but that's because what's happened before anybody knew what was going on, there's been this really covert operation in order to get people into positions of power and to influence uh, legislation. So by the time anybody's like, hey, what's happening? There's already crimes in, uh, crimes in place to criminalise anybody. Let's go straight to the lines again and join Mike in Manchester. You're on Talk TV, Mike. Hi, how are you doing? You OK? Hey, good, thanks. Ah, cool, cool, cool. What's your question Actually, for Kelly? Um, yeah, it was just um, a quick one. I understand that, um, Kelly, you opposed something that was happening in your primary school when a trans lobby kind of came, well, tried to come in. Um, and I've got a little one. He's not school age yet, thankfully, but I don't see this, like, the madness really going away anytime soon. But I want to know how is, you know, what would you advise possibly the best the best way to oppose this kind of thing without making yourself and, more, more importantly, your child a pariah? Right, well, I think you as an adult have a lot of power, as a parent, have a lot of power to talk to your school. And there are different ways to approach the school. You could start by approaching the teacher, having a really open and frank discussion um, about what they're going to teach your child. You could raise questions then. If that doesn't work, then you go to the head. If that doesn't work, you go to the governors. But you ask really basic, straightforward questions, you know, are you going to teach my son or daughter that there is no such thing as actual <laughs> fixed biological sex? Oh, and yeah. <laughs> to what end? So I think that's what you can do. You can also go to a website called transgendertrend.com and they have a school's guidance. So that means you can inform your school about how to deal with this issue without actually penalising any children that are unfortunate enough to have parents 
who maybe have suggested to them that they are not really a boy or a girl. And parents who abuse their children. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. So what happens in biology classes yeah. now? What do they teach in biology? Well, even in medical school, yeah. they are teaching this nonsense. Yeah. That, you know, biological sex is not necessarily fixed and they use they use uh, terms like assigned at birth. I'm chest feeding and they have to ask men if yeah. they're pregnant, mm. don't they? Yeah, yeah. former men. Can't, yeah, have this, so can't have this. It's bonkers. Yeah. It is bonkers. And I don't mind actually uh, saying this publicly. Uh, I think we're in the majority here. I think most people are uh, for this uh, and, and for you, Kelly as well. Kelly J. Keane is here with us in the studio. Plenty of callers. James in Cheshire is with us. James, welcome. Hi, yeah. Well, I mean, I've got no kids of my own. I'm 53 years of age. I mean, when I was at school, we never heard, heard about any of this. You know, it was male and female, pure and simple. But what I think's happened, basically, is, and uh, a lot of people won't agree with me on this, I think the left in general, 30-odd years ago, realised that uh, the Conservatives get elected more than they do, and they thought, well, brainwash kids. And they've been brainwashed in ever since with transgender ideology, with woke ideology and left-wing bias. And this is what it's all about, brainwashing mm. kids. I'm going to expand on that, uh, James. It's a very important point you make. Um, we need to stand by our beds as bad as who we are. Do you think some of the kind of uh, moorings, the social moorings, have come up enabling this vacuum of new belief systems coming in? If people perhaps resorted to perhaps who they were in religious terms, that you would be more certain of your position. So, for example, if you're a Catholic, and the Catholic Church has a very clear view on this, uh, the Jewish religion has a very clear view on this, I don't know what the Church of England's going on about at the moment, but, but that's <laughs> not the point. Uh, and Islam, of course, can't you just say, but I am a Hindu, I'm a Sikh, I'm a, I'm a Jew, I'm a, I, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Catholic. No. Well, I would have thought so until we had the um, parents in Birmingham, where their school was targeted by a woke activist, and he, I think he was a head teacher there, and he wanted to introduce LGBTQ plus Mm. nonsense and um and i'm not, i don't mean that lgb is nonsense i mean that it's co totally co-opted by t so when you talk about lgbt you're really only talking about t mm. um and that teacher targeted a very um uh, religious school where the majority of parents were muslims and i would have said two years before that if you'd had muslim islam versus or muslim people versus lgbt the muslims would have had it and unfortunately, uh, this agenda is so powerful, it even went against the religious freedom of those parents. Kelly J, why is it so powerful? Who's, who's running this? Who are they? Well, maybe we don't have a genuine civil rights fight anymore and somebody wants to make a lot of money. And Stonewall made a lot of money and then gay marriage happened and... What are they going to do? Well, they have the loudest voice, don't they? And the people against you think, well, we better be quiet. Yeah, and so, in fighting? the end, you're, you're only getting one side, aren't you? But, but before, like, gay marriage is a, is clearly something that most of most people either don't care about or yeah. absolutely support. Yeah. And so that was a lot of money. It was a big old fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but and you, then, you don't hear about from the people who don't care because they're not don't care. So you only yeah. hear the one side. So that's how yeah. it all happens. But now we, but now what happens to Stonewall? Where are they going to continue raising funds and for what? Mm. And so now they've come up with other fights, and their current fight is is transgender That's ideology. That's absolutely fascinating, and I know this is discussed in Douglas Murray's book about uh, the unending progressive route as uh, as victories like gay marriage are achieved. Gemma in Litchfield's with us. Hello, Gemma. Hi. Hi, Gemma. Sorry, I've never spoken to you before. Well, I, it's awful. it's our pleasure, and You've you're welcome. You've to me before, Gemma. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to say? Oh, I've just got a little story. It won't take long. It's nothing to do with Wales. Uh, so I was on radio one night when I was feeling bipolarish, and uh, I told, retold a story of when I was a manager of a girls' football team. Yeah. And it was a long way back in, you know, uh, kind of a long time ago. Like it's the, the, little, the kids that were playing are little dots. Yeah. Then. But now they're grown women. Yeah. And, and uh, it turned out my team lost 7 now. They were all girls. But one of the girls, and the BBC said, when I retold this story on the best other broadcast, please just leave out the trans bit. So now I'm not, I'm not going to leave out the trans bit. What is the trans bit? 
the transmit is, I said, the captain of the other team that beat us 7 0 uh, identified as a boy. And the whole of the uh, greenery where we was, because it was like, um, do you remember that thing, Ash? Uh, building for the future, was it? Or um, Green Park for everyone? Was a boy, and she, bless her, was going around saying, I'm a boy! And and then all my team were going, she's a boy. And the BBC said, just you can tell the whole story, but you it's just it's a bit touchy at the moment. Don't mention that bit. And I just thought, Argh! thank you, Gemma. Thanks, Gemma. Um, okay. Good. Point. Good. Good. Well, point. I don't think we've got. Well, I mean, unless you know, we got we got Ken in London now. Let's move on to Ken. Hello, Ken. Good evening. You're with Kelly J, ah, Ken. Johnny, and Ash. Here on a Saturday night. What's your question? I don't have a question. I'm just with some statements, if you don't mind. Fire away. A, a, a woman is a grown female human being, as your guest has already said. A woman has a womb, a uterus, and a cervix. And there are only two sexes, male or female. And there are only two genders, male or female. To say there are 100 genders is absolute nonsense mm. now how how can we how can we get, de, get delivered from this folly which has taken over the nation i can tell you how we can be delivered from this foolishness we must get back to our nation's christian foundations and the teachings of the bible marriage is for one man and one woman for life the family unit consists of a father a mother sons and daughters this is god's foundations for humanity now we have went into this sexual madness because we now mock the Bible, we mock Jesus Christ, we mock our Christian heritage, and our nation is now on the highway to hell. This is serious trouble, dear friends. We need to waken up. Ken, we've spoken before, and um, I'm one of the only presenters who will not mock you for your beliefs, because I, uh, I think uh, that uh, that is a fairly decent thing. It's something that I've, I, I reached out to you for just before the break, Kelly J, that actually you have to have a certainty in who you are. And I think people are on the back foot because they've suddenly forgotten where they came from, who they are, whether mm. they are Christians like Ken or Muslims or maybe like Khaled, I'm just assuming, probably is, uh, etc. Uh, Jewish people, etc. This is, uh, we've got to remember who we are. Well, I speak as what I call a gold star atheist, which means I've never actually believed you in You don't God. have to have a religion to be to, to be on a certain yes. side, but I'm just saying that it, there has to be a certainty, a self-respect, a starting point. Well, I would agree, but... A unless, gold star atheist. Unless, <laughs> no, unless you're a nationalist or have, like, extraordinary patriotism, then I would suggest that a religion actually is more of a sense of belonging. And as we recede from collective beliefs, whatever they might be, and I would say that in this country Christianity would have been a collective belief and we shared that they overlap with Judaism and uh, all other world religions. But as we recede from that, then I feel that the vacuum created mm. is the worship of oneself. Yes. And I think that yeah. is changing. Ken, what do, you make, what do you make of that, Ken, as a, as a believer, as a Christian believer? That is, that is a, a wonderful statement that lady just mentioned here. The worship of self, that's one of the extreme uh, forms of idolatry, to worship self. Now, the human body is precious. It's a design. The design in the human body is absolutely amazing. And if somebody wants to find out about that design, check out creation.com. It's totally scientific. It's not religious. Creation.com. Now, the human body has to be honored, not abused. The human body today is dishonored, abused and treated as merely a sexual... Well, I think, Ken, you, you're, you, you depart from Ken's views on homosexuality. You, you think that's oh, yes. a, an abomination, don't you, Ken, as well? And, you know, you think that should be... You know, you should only be a man and a woman, and it should all be in marriage. That's your views. Jimmy in Birmingham. Yeah, hi, uh, uh, Johnny. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right, thanks, Jim. How are you? Uh, not bad. I'd like to say hello to Ash. All right, Jimmy, where are you in Birmingham? Dude on telly. Thank you, man. <laughs> what do you want to say to Kellyanne? It's true. Kelly J. Yeah. Oh, I know. I'll tell you why I'm phoning. <laughs> um, Kelly J. Keen, she's a big, big woman. And I've seen her many times. I think she's fantastic. And, you know, 
they, they keep trying. I've seen her in other things, and they try and catch her out and trip her up to make her say things so they can get an excuse to cancel her and rubbish her. You know, and she doesn't fall for it because she's very clever and intelligent. And I'd just like to say to her, I think she's marvellous and well done. Jimmy, thank you very thank much. You've you got much. A fan club number probably 1,000. Everyone loves Kelly J. That's why she's here in this studio. And we're not going to. I, I mean, it's fair enough to challenge because I, I do want to ask one question after Graham in Stokes on the line. Graham, you're on Talk TV. Hello, Mike. Hello, it's Graham. It's Johnny and Ash. I'll go Kelly. with Mike. I don't mind. I'll be Mike. Mike. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just want to say a few things, if I can. If go ahead. Is that OK? Yeah. I love your show. It's amazing. That's um, my Graham's show. I yeah. tell everybody about it. Um, I just want to answer Ken from London, actually, because I'm gay and I'm an atheist. I mean, I, I don't believe in none of that rubbish about the sky wizard. You know, how can you believe in a book? Don't insult re- other letting... people's religions, OK? You know, it's OK to... You can you cannot believe in it, but don't insult people in that way. Yeah, but you can do what you want, OK? People. He's just insulted gay people, hasn't he? Yeah. By saying it's an... Ab- he ab- hasn't ab- insulted them. He has an abomination. used his Christian values. That's not an insult. That's what he believes. He's not, he's not insulted well, right. you. Well, you're insulted, aren't you, Graham? I am insulted, yeah, and I'll tell you for why. Christianity, uh, whether you're a, a Christian, whether you're a Muslim, it's all rubbish, in my opinion, and I'm entitled to an opinion like he's entitled to his. Indeed you in are. In 2022, people need to get rid of the fear of death, because that's what religion's based on, corruption and the fear of death. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. power. That's power. a bit simplistic, but thanks, Graham. Uh, Catherine in Cyprus. Catherine, let's go, to, let's go to Cyprus, where it's lovely and warm this time of year. Catherine, you're Hello. with, uh, you're with oh. Kelly J. Hello. 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 I, really, I really, really admire you. I think you're doing a wonderful job, a brilliant job. Thank and, you. Um, I've recently had a granddaughter. She's now six months old. And the idea that you are assigned a gender at birth is totally ridiculous. The baby comes out, you know whether it's female or male, surely. You do know whether it's female or male. A hundred percent. We need to get rid of that word gender. It's n- nonsensical and... and well, they're the same thing. I think gender and sex are just the same thing, just two different words. For well, themselves. Americans didn't like They've the word sex, that, did but, they? Yeah. Damn Americans. No, no, no. <laughs> um, and we've got... It. Too many things going on with the transgender and all the rest of it, and how come it's increased so much? I don't that, get it. This is the thing, Ka- uh, Catherine. That's a very good question. We talked uh, uh, about Stonewall having won their big um, generational battle mm. about gay marriage, but with the idea of progressive politics is just you, you can never stop winning, and it's now gone into extremist territory. That's kind of what's happened, doesn't it? Yeah, well, look, the explosion is all the places that I'm sure neither of us frequent, which is your more youthful social media. Um, of which their name escapes me, but my kids are on it all the time. Mm. Um, TikTok. TikTok. There's a lot of there's a lot of trans promotion on TikTok. There's a lot of um, uh, there's a, a musician called Young Blood, and he brought out a girl onto the stage who then show, showed her um, double mastectomy scars, mm. and she got a huge cheer from the audience. It was it was really profoundly quite upsetting, horrible yeah. thing to watch. Um, but it's sort of it's hysteria. And so all through these social media forums, um, there are people called egg catchers. And what they do is they go and there'll be trans, there'll be men who call themselves women, and they will go onto these forums and they will pluck out vulnerable kids Mm. to sort of entice them into this, which sounds totally child catcher bonkers, but I promise you it's that's happening. Is it a reaction to the right as well, like Trump in America and over here we had Brexit? And is it a reaction, social media's reacting to all that? I don't know. I, I mean, Those obviously, extreme extreme positions. Positions. Trump and Brexit are not extreme positions. No, but you know, they're by the woke brigade. They are. Aren't they? Well, I think they are. It, that is a woke thing, isn't it? Yeah. Like the, the Trump, the fact that we protested more about Trump getting elected than the, than anything that China and have ever done off is Twitter nuts. And everything, yeah, yeah, it's just crazy. But uh, the trans stuff is is targeting mm. more vulnerable kind of teenagers. That's the danger. Mm. James is in Manchester. Hi, James. 
Oh, hello, Johnny and Ash, and uh, an especially big um, hello to Kelly. Hello. Who I, oh, hello, Kelly, who I absolutely adore. I've been following you, by the way, on um, uh, not just uh, Twitter, but I've, I've seen your interviews all around the world, Fox News, all the rest of it. I think you're doing a fantastic job, and thank God we've got somebody like you. Um, I, I am horrified. I mean, I am 55, I'm gay, I don't have children, but Mrs sisters have and all that lot. But um, even I am absolutely horrified uh, 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 what I am reading. I, I've done a lot of study on this, by the way, and uh, a lot of research. And um, what is going on in this country is phenomenal. It's absolutely outrageous. And um, we have a situation in this country where we are trying to now normalise this. Uh, and what is really upsetting me is that it's now been introduced to four-year-olds. And I'll give you two examples. Um, in Scotland, the, uh, you might remember Kelly, I'm sure you do, that they recently uh, gave all the primary school children a survey to fill in, and one yes. of the questions was, have you had anal sex? Oh, mm. God, no. Yeah. And uh, and, and the, the, the other example that I brought up on Twitter only two weeks ago, I was surprised I didn't get banned from it, actually, mm. but uh, there was a group of three um, lobbyists that introduced a book... Uh, to primary schools. They managed to get them into 1,800 schools already in this country. And um, uh, I looked at the book, and it teaches um, primary, I think it's five in this country now, five and six years of the class of primary. And um, it teaches five-year-olds um, that, um, it, that, that, that there's questions in it. Are you sure you're a boy? Are you sure you're a girl? Mm. Um, did you not know you might not be a boy? And, and there's an incredible page section in that same book. I hope you look it up. I just wish I could remember the name of it. But uh, it's, it's out there. And one of the uh, aspects of this book is it says you uh, will only be defined whether you're a boy or a girl uh, uh, by a doctor uh, 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 somewhere in the hospital. You, you know, not that you are a boy. It has to be. Well, you you gave a, a phrase out um, um, earlier, Kelly, and that's what it said in this very book. Um, it's called you, you're, "You will define uh, 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 you'll be assigned at birth." Right. Yes. And that's yeah, and that's what you said. Thank and, you, James. Uh, 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 Kelly, are the government doing enough to counter this sort of incursion into the national curriculum? Absolutely not. They're no. not, are they? No, they're not. They really need to get on this. Well, it's quite gutless. I mean, Savage Javid said something about uh, not transitioning kids or about women needing autonomy. Boris said something else. It's really not filtered down more than a couple of sound bites. The education secretary is in, in charge of the curriculum. Surely, I mean... Well, you'd think, well, couldn't you? Yeah, you'd think, well, look, it, I mean, do they teach uh, other dangerous ideologies in school? No. Do they say there's two sides to smoking? Yeah. Like, some people really love it and it's also bad. No, they don't. Yeah. So there's, it's um, politically, it's well, it's just cowardice. Donna in London. Hello, Donna. Hi. Hi, Donna. What do you want to talk about? What do you want to say? Yeah, well, I just want to say that, um, you know, I'm, I'm a big trans supporter... I, I've got trans friends, I've got um, lesbian friends, gay friends and everything like that. But what what concerns me more is this question about what is a woman. And I would just like to say what I think a woman is, is um, I, I was born a female girl and I was born with a womb, I was born with ovaries and I was born with a vagina. And that makes me a female. Yeah. A trans woman... Um, has surgical and medical intervention to make them a female and that's fine too but I would still like to keep my rights as a woman a biological woman to say that I am a woman well I think that is your right I mean I I don't actually think that anybody can try uh, change sex but I'm, I'm more than happy that you want to be recognized as a woman I think it's important Kelly J just I want to just unpack the genuine concern of real trans issues of people with real uh, sexuality problems because you have a sympathy for those people too so for example someone like Kelly Maloney for example used to be Frank Maloney mm. what's your position on her well she, she is a her isn't 
she? Absolutely not, no. She's not a... No, uh, Even no. though she's had the operation. I don't think that any man can ever change sex. I don't think any human can ever change sex. And I don't uh, agree that anybody should be afforded the right to compel my speech to recognise any such thing because I just don't think it's real. I certainly wouldn't read... If I was sat in a room with Kelly Maloney, I certainly wouldn't read him as anything other than okay. male. That's good to know, and thank you so much, uh, Kelly J. Keane.